All right. Basically, uh, All right, welcome back. Long time no see. Uh, for people who come across this later and they're wondering what in the world is going on here, we were very, very close to the 12 hour limit for our stream. So we ended the apologetic supergroup live stream, but we are picking it back up from where we left off. We'll probably go another hour or so. Um, and then I really will need to call it a night at that point because I do need to get some sleep before I go to church tomorrow. Before, Shortly before we ended the first stream, uh, Rob from Sentinel Apologetics and Eric Blue joined the conversation. They haven't yet had an opportunity to introduce themselves, so we'll start with you, Rob. Yeah, hey guys. Sorry for uh, hey. coming in very late. Um, Matt Thaddeus, I appreciate you extending the stream and uh, I know I missed, <laughs> I must have missed a, a very juicy 10 plus hours prior, but uh, yeah, I'm willing to share my two cents if, if required. Yep, absolutely. So you want to uh, let people know about a little bit about your t YouTube channel? Yeah, so I run Sentinel Apologetics. It's it's like a hobby channel. Um, I became a Christian in 2015. And my channel uh, is basically heavy scholarly academic focused. Um, I, I don't shy away from critical scholarship or liberal scholarship from the biblical text. I actually use it to my advantage. And um, and yeah, it's it's just got a range of from ancient Near Eastern stuff to, uh, you know, blending that with science or cutting edge science um, uh, areas of research, scientific areas of research. And that's basically it. Like, <laughs> you just go, you have to just hop in over and just see it for yourself, I suppose. So, yeah. Excellent. Yep. And I'll get a link to that in the video description, probably of both videos. I'll probably just copy and paste the description from the one. Uh, so from the informed infidel, the like button isn't fully covered, hit it gently with a toothbrush. So since this is a new stream, uh, everyone who hopped over from the previous stream, uh, well, first of all, thank you for coming over and do hit like again, because as far as YouTube's concerned, this is a completely new video. So I don't know how much of the stream you saw, Rob. I don't know if you saw our little party game here where we're coming up with uh, a reason for each of the surahs of the Quran to doubt that it comes from God. So most of the Ooh. initial surahs, since they're pretty long, have been covered, but is there a particular surah or verse that you have in mind? Uh, well, um <laughs> well let well you come back to me in about it. two minutes because i'll i have plenty of, so I'll, what i'll go, what i'll do is i'll go to my list and i'll uh i'll pick up some some examples like the ones that you haven't touched so, so I'll, I'll be right back in two minutes can you explain yep. chapter 34 iron chain mail by david uh yeah i can and rebring that up so what, what's, what's uh, the so that point one yeah. Chainmail didn't exist so that's then. Actually, right. So that one's Very actually mine. Um, and in Surah 34, it says that David was given the ability to work iron and he fastened the links to make a um, iron coat or a, a chainmail coat. Mm -hmm. uh, and the problem is that chainmail had not been invented in the ninth, tenth, whatever century you want to place David exactly BC. And this is problematic because the, the argument that I typically give, and, and maybe you would have a different one, but the, the response I typically would see uh, when I did research on this is something like, well, just because we don't have proof that there was chain mail at that time doesn't mean that there wasn't, which is technically true right then that's logically valid response <clears throat> however the the weight of an argument from silence uh, depends on how much you would expect to see something so 
chain mail gives you a massive advantage in a war. So we would expect to see evidence of this. Uh, we would expect to see evidence of David's armies being victorious over their neighbors if they had this technology that no one else had. We would expect to see writings about it, um, both friendly and and um, opposition writings about the the advanced technology, so to speak, of the army. And we'd probably also expect at least, you know, not quite as likely, but still pretty likely to find some sort of archaeological evidence because there's extensive digging in Israel there. And this isn't the kind of thing that would be completely wiped out by the passage of time in the archaeological. Okay, right. Can I interact with, with that point? myself yeah you can you can respond to it okay so, so basically your argument is Quran uses anachronism and this is why Quran is false right well it makes a historical error in that it, it declares that David was given this ability when he wasn't and uh -huh. so, so it, I understood correctly right and well it, it's not strictly speaking an anachronism because that would be using a phrase but yeah close enough it, uh -huh. it, it is uh, a historical error, you can call it an anachronism if you want. Uh, can, can you please open 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38 for me? Yeah, your Excellent. Quran yeah. being untrue. Mary, 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 go, Mary. go ahead. I, I'm very happy to do that um, because he doesn't uh, he doesn't realize what that's going to show about yeah. the Bible. But to Mary's point, even if the Bible was also false, that wouldn't make the Quran true. Well, I can explain this verse, actually. I can explain this verse. But first... Uh, I, I, I would also like to come back to my list yeah, yeah. engagement. Yes, we will, we will definitely get to that. Um, so, I don't recall the exact verse off the top of my head. Can you tell me 1738. 1738. 17. Yes, thank you. And let me share that on publicly so everyone can see what I'm looking at. <coughs> yes. Uh, so uh, this is the ESV and it will say a code of mail, uh, mm -hmm. which is what you wanted the audit. Whoop, let me, yeah. sorry, let yeah. me add and, that to the string. And actually, actually, uh, to, to add to that point, uh, in, in defense of the Bible, it, it is not an anachronism, okay? Because if, if you did your research, you, you, would, you would understand, right? You, you would realize that it refers actually to lamellar armor or scale armor, which was common in It does times. in the Bible, yes. It does in which the current. So, yeah, you're correct. If, if we go to this word, word here, uh, Suryan, and we look up what it means, it relates to animal scales. So it absolutely does refer to scale armor in the Quran, or I mean, sorry, in the Bible, uh, because of the the word that is used. And you know, I can pull up the, the lexicon here. So in the Bible's case, it's a mistranslation. So if you want to make the same argument for the Quran, uh, then I would certainly be interested in hearing that. Um, but the Quran refers to making links. Uh, which is not what you do to make scale armor. Oh, lamellar armor. Lamellar, uh, lamellar armor uh, fits too. That's scale armor. It's the same thing. Scale armor yeah, is laminar. Yeah, it's a different, yeah, it's it's a different, just a different word. The same thing. Um, just easier to say. Yeah, and if you look up these other references in the, the Bible, you'll see that uh, some of them refer specifically to animals. So they have to be referring to scale armor. Um, in the Quran, the only place the word is used is in Surah 3410. So there's no cross references. So I, I, I would be interested in your evidence from the Quran that it isn't referring to chain mail. Or, or you know, your classic Arabic dictionaries or whatever you're going to, since you can't cross reference it with the Quran. What evidence do you want again? Uh, yeah, evidence that uh, when the Quran, so I can bring up the, 
the verse, but it basically says that we gave David the ability to, um, we made, it says we made iron malleable for David. He fashioned a coat of mail by fastening the links is the gist of it. And, and like I said, I can pull up the exact wording. I'm, I'm going off of memory here, so that's not word for word what the translation is, but that's pretty close. That's the gist of what it says. And what I'm asking is if you're going to say that this is referring to scale armor and not chain mail from uh, you know, our understanding of that term, then my request would be evidence that the specific Arabic term in the Quran means scale armor. Well, it doesn't even say scale armor in the Bible. So how do you know it's the same in the Bible? Oh, it, well, it does in Hebrew. Uh, in Hebrew, it says scales, literally. Yeah, it says armor of scales. Like the, the word is literally scales. The, it's used elsewhere in the description of clean and unclean animals. And it says, you know, animals with scales. No, I don't see it in, in the Bible hub. It just says body armor. Well, okay. Bible, so, Bible do, do you want me to? Right. So, okay. Can I? You know what? I'll just share my screen. Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I. So what? What I'm showing you on the screen is, is how it, the Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament. It's a standard reference work for the meaning of Hebrew words. Uh, so this is far more authoritative than the public domain resources that you'll find yeah. at Bible Hub. They. You know, they were good academic texts for a hundred plus years ago when they were published, but we know a lot more about language at this time uh, than we did at that time. And if you cross-reference it just within the Bible, you'll, you'll see that some of these passages <coughs> couldn't possibly be referring to anything other than scales. Uh, and um, yeah, if, Yep. So I will go ahead and switch over to Rob's link or Rob's screen share here. Yeah. So this is uh, um, the, the most latest uh, commentary on Samuel. This is by the EEC, uh, Harry Hoffner. He's he passed away actually a few months after his publication of this commentary. It's a 2015 commentary. Um, Consider now a standard for Samuel's scholarship. This is how he translates verse 38. Uh, Saul clothes David with his robe. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a scale armor shirt. And in the footnote, he points out how you have the term with respect to the Septuagint, the Greek. It refers to garments that would be worn under the scale armor shirt. So there's an emphasis on the fact that you have a specific shirt that's used to accommodate the scale armor. It's 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 different to to chains that that you see in. Uh... So in in thirty four eleven it says, "Make thou coast of mail, balancing well the rings of chain armor, and work ye righteousness for be sure I see clearly all that ye do." It's 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 an anachronism. There's there's no such thing as chain armor in in the ninth century BC. I can even go back to um, let's see. I can even go back to uh, verse four of of Second Samuel seventeen. Well, actually, specifically verse 5 and 7, not, not so much verse 4. <clears throat> so let, I'll go back to the translation. So the translation here has... He, this is because don't forget, this the clothing of David is in proportion to, to Goliath's clothing and armor. So it's, a, it's trying to have like a one-to-one -one correlation, basically. But, but David rejects it, by the way. Um, that's the irony of the passage. David actually doesn't wear the armor. Uh, he had helmet of bronze. So this is Goliath. He had a helmet of bronze on his head. Notice that same thing with David. 
and he wore a leather vest reinforced with bronze scale armor. There you go. Same sort of correlation, right? The shirt with respect to the scale armor. The weight of the bronze vest was 125 pounds. He had chins, guards of bronze on his legs, and a scimitar of bronze slung between his shoulders. So, now when you come down to the relevant verses here, uh, notice what uh, Hofmeier, not not Hofmeier, um, Hofner, what he says here. He goes, the components of Goliath's protective armor and weaponry correspond closely to that used by the Mycenaean Greek warriors of the 12th to 11th centuries BC. Uh, the Philistines were said to have come to the southern coast of Palestine from Crete, which lay within this cultural orbit. Um, and then he goes into the identity of the, um, you know, the weapons and all that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That, but the point is. The weaponry and the armor correlate to this context. So, you, so that means you need to establish that Surah thirty-four eleven corresponds to this specific um, utilization of the armor and the weapons and you know all that stuff. The Quranic word that is used is sabigat, and uh, it's, it's quite ambiguous, so you can easily interpret it uh, whichever way you want, basically. So th there is nothing like explicit saying that it's like uh, mid Middle Ages uh, coat of arms, uh, something like that. So it, it's a weak the, argument. The, I, yeah, well, I will agree that the code itself is perhaps ambiguous. The problem is that you got three terms that are all working towards understanding what the, the passage means. You got that the iron is malleable, then you got that the coat itself, and then you got the rings. So those three terms combined is how you exegete the passage. And the only way that it makes sense from my understanding is if you're talking about chain mail that has little rings. That's what chain mail is, is it's a bunch of little rings woven together uh so it, unless you have another explanation for you know the the malleable iron combined with the coat itself combined with the the links then the most plausible explanation for the text is that it's talking about a chain co a male coat in my study of the specific word for the coat while it is perhaps um well, it perhaps is broader than just a chainmail code. It was the standard term used for a chainmail code during the seventh century. By the way, do you see this? Yes. Okay, so this is this is Ibn Kathir. And notice how he says make you perfect code to mail, which means chain mail. He was the first person ever to make chain mail. Before that, they used to wear plated armor. <laughs> so hang on. Before the ninth century, they they used to wear plated armor. But then you have to establish that in the ninth century, chain mail was invented in the ninth century BC period. Well, we don't know that. This is not like some obvious fact or anything. It's like saying that uh, Gutenberg invented printing press, right? Just because you don't know about the Chinese doesn't, doesn't mean that he's the first. It's argument from silence. But, well, well, yes, no, but, but I covered we... that in my initial statement. So Gutenberg is credited with, uh, with uh, creating movable type in the West, not any sort of printing press. Yeah, but um, when he invented, he didn't so, know about the Chinese. But he, they were not doing movable type that's fine you, you don't understand what he's credited with but anyway if you go over uh i'm not a huge uh uh arms and armor buff but uh all of the early armor um through the fifth and fourth centuries bc or excuse me it, even in uh, through the fifth century bc at least okay was bronze it wasn't iron 
So even all of those, it wasn't just that it was during the Bronze Age that was invented. It was still bronze. It wasn't made of iron. Iron was just super brittle a lot of the times. So it's made of the wrong material because his would have been bronze. It wouldn't have been iron. David's would have been bronze because David was from like uh, the 900s BC or yes. the 10 hundreds BC, one so or the if other. You, if you want, yes. Yeah, so if you want to, ex if the earliest you can extend it is the fifth century BC. Otherwise, and that's for any kind of iron. Like any kind of iron is of the fourth century BC is any kind of iron basically for right. um, breastplates or any kind of iron uh, breast protection material, body armor. Right. There we go. Yeah, but the earliest would be three BC, three third century BC. You could push it to fourth century, but you can also push it to the fifth. But it's there's variations. Don't forget, they are not all the same. Um, but this is the history of it. Any anyone any prior to that is just argument from silence or special pleading or and uh, just plain, pure plain anachronism. Well, the the point here is clear, right? You can either I, I can easily debunk this by saying that uh, the word used in the Quran is ambiguous, so it, it doesn't. It, explicitly say then uh, why trans then why did the translators say chain well the by does the translators in the bible said call code of mail right it's, well which well, which, which translation are you referring to uh on the strongs it says ah, but when was when was strongs written well i'm sure i can find you other translations with the same thing because Strong's was so, written before the discovery well, even of the Even without Strong's, for example. The Dead Scrolls, like Strong's was written New Living prior to of the Mayer. latest in biblical scholarship. ESV says Code of Mail. There are many translations. Yeah, well, so it, right. You're correct. Many translations do say that. And that's because they're just inheriting. Ultimately, most translations are derived from the King James in one way or another. That. that through their textual well, this history, is why I they prefer the ISV to... because the ISV says right, scale they... armor, <laughs> and the ISV is <laughs> more correct on this particular verse. Um, but you know, a Muslim will tell us that you have to go to the Arabic to have the best understanding of the text, and the right to an extent. Uh, and we're saying that you have to go to the Hebrew to have the best understanding of the text, and we're right to extent. Does it generally matter? Does it, you know, do you get a completely different message? No. But when you're talking about like these nitty gritty, small little details here, and then you want to go to the original term and, and see the sense of it. And I already conceded that the term that's translated code of mail could be more broad than just that. The problem is that you, the correct translation of a word, the correct understanding of a word, if it's your own language and you don't need to translate it, is based on the context. And the context is describing the creation of a chain mail coat. So it's not just the one word that is potentially ambiguous, but rather it's the entirety of the, the uh, two verse context there where it's talking about this being given as David as a special uh, ability, a special sign uh, of his kingness or, or you know whatever you want to say for that. And it's describing the iron as being malleable and it's describing him fashioning the coat of links. Uh, so it, it says that he, he just does whatever the code is, and that's the particular term that you want to say is ambiguous. And then it says, and he carefully measured the links. So the context demands that even if the term is broader, and uh, you know I'm conceding that it might be, even if the term itself is broader and, and could be translated a different way in isolation, the context demands that it be translated as code of mail. But even for the sake of argument, if I grant you, right, it's still uh, boils down to absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. It's like uh, with the crucifixion claim that Christians use, like, oh, it says like uh, Pharaoh was crucifying people, and oh, we don't have like any historical evidence of that. Like, just because you right. don't have it doesn't mean that it, it never happened. 
Yes, actually, with some things, you can be quite confident that things didn't happen, because what we do have is a massive amount of evidence about who invented it and when. We know when iron started to be used in breastplates. People wrote about these things. They drew pictures. Yes, we do have evidence about when things happened. We know who invented crucifixion as a punishment. It wasn't even the Romans. They stole it from the Persians. Um, so we know about these things. Uh, it's no, not, no. we have actual evidence. You're flying in the face of that. That's like saying, Hey, they could have had space rockets in ancient Egypt because we don't have proof that they don't. That is the level of this argumentation. So now that you cannot no longer say, Hey, it wasn't made of iron. Hey, it wasn't made of links. You have to agree that it's made of iron and links. You're like, well, maybe they actually had it back then. No, I don't actually, say actually, Mary, Mary, um, you have really put yourself into it, haven't you? Because look, <laughs> the spaceships like that's the kind of Muslim look, argumentation. Look, look it's, it's a space rocket. Yep. <laughs> Wait, I, am I? There we go. There. Yep. Yeah. 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 So I had to. How dare you I ignore the time. fact that see, there's a helicopter here. <laughs> There's but, the Jones's car over here. But that's the level of There's argumentation here. here. It really is. Like, can't you see high technology in ancient Egypt? I, I do have to admit that those hieroglyphs do look like a helicopter. I would say it looks like a tank, personally. But I would. Although we know that this is a palimpsest, but, but let's just ignore oh, scholarly investigations <laughs> on this. <laughs> uh, which scholars? So white people scholars? Those Orientalists who are poisoned oh by goodness. white supremacy? Do you know what a palimpsest is? Uh, no. A palimpsest is writing on top of another writing. So there's hieroglyphs underneath. So this, the, someone tried to erase the prior hieroglyphs and rewrite with new hieroglyphs a totally different message. But then over time, degrading took place and then it it coincidence took place where the hieroglyphs underneath showed and the hieroglyphs on the top remained to give this impression that it looks like a helicopter and but really this is a hand see this is a hand um this is technically a mouth um the the hieroglyph for the helicopter this is actually a bow hieroglyph well, it's fun to speculate right it, it's very fun to do so but again we we have nothing concrete right we have nothing concrete about this is not speculation well, so again what you're saying is that the classic example of a palimpsest so what you're saying is basically is that if something didn't exist no one can possibly say that something didn't exist before it existed it might have always existed so again i would like you to convince me that there weren't spaceships in ancient egypt according to your own uh methodology uh, or are you going to say that I, there might have been why would i do that i don't really care about uh, those spaceships or ancient egypt so again when you have to go to an argument that is so utterly ridiculous that you cannot say with certainty whether or not there were spaceships in ancient Egypt using your methodology. Your methodology is broken and cannot be used. You cannot go to it. You cannot claim that you have any kind of knowledge about what exists at any time, period, if, you, if your methodology can't reject spaceships in Egypt. <clears throat> We don't need, we don't even need to do that. Like this is shuffle just in, shuffle in. Yeah. Go ahead. keep shuffling. Right. right. All right. We probably so, need to go on to another subject, but we yeah, see what yeah, this yeah. has let's, gone let's, to. Right. We, we, I want to move on. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, uh, can I? Sorry. It, like, it's uh, not pure hi hypocrisy. It, it's no, no, when it says in the Bible, oh, no, it, it, it's different. When it says in the Quran, oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. So well, yeah, let's look. No, is, we're looking at the Hebrew and we're looking at the Arabic. I gave you a very specific my... reason why, and I gave you how you could provide the same sort of evidence for the Quran. You could appeal to classic Arabic dictionaries. You could appeal to other texts that, that demand that the word be translated as scale armor. But all you said is, in your opinion, it's ambiguous. Which is, It's an ambiguous word that can be translated in many ways. Okay, And, and the context, you, you haven't addressed the links. You haven't addressed the malleable iron. You've only addressed the one specific word that's translated as code of, of mail.
So, well, yeah, let's look at this again. The Arabic says. No, no, no. no. I don't. I don't. All right. I don't You're done. All right. <laughs> So, so Nicodemus wants to say something. Well, actually, and I then just I want to introduce our other two guests who haven't had a chance. Oh, sorry. That's what they're I so tiny that to... I can't see them. That's what I was going to say. Like Eric sent, sent a message in there, like, uh, "Hey, remember me, guys? I wanted to say hello." So that's it. I just want to say, let's remember the in intros. That yep. was it. That's so, what I wanted to say. Uh, okay, so welcome to the chat, Eric Blue. Hey, hello. Could I share my image? Yes, I, I can hear you. You're, you're a little quiet, but I definitely am hearing you. Okay. Is that better? Yes. All right. Yeah, the, my name is uh, Eric Blue. Uh, I am uh, uh, basically a Christian. Uh, I'm uh, an active uh, Joe Winners. Uh, basically, yeah, I just wanted to come in and uh, just basically put my uh, sense in and because uh, I've read uh, the Quran until like verse 20 uh, so so I, I did find a, a lot of stuff um, that uh, especially with the with Noah's flood so uh, mm -hmm. so yeah so I just just wanted to uh, check in yeah absolutely so uh I think you've been around for a while. You've probably seen me introduce the, the little game here. Uh, you said that you read the first 20 surahs of the Quran. There are several available from the first Yeah, I want to get 20, my, so. my two cents on that. Oh, you're right, right, right. Yeah, and we yeah. still got to get one from Rob as well. I forgot all about it with the, the chain mail distraction. I do have something to add on, on 11, definitely. Okay, perfect. So what did you want to say about Surah 11? Well, uh, they, because the, and the Quran and Muslims say it was a local flood, right? It's an issue. So, uh, here in 11. Locals say world flood. Al-Tabari says it's world right. flood. So All the Ahadith, the ancient Ahadith say that it's global. Yep, so, so, so Surah 11. So when I was I reading, know yeah, Surah 11, uh, 36, 37, and 40. So basically, um, there were only certain people that embarked on, on the ark. And then it refers to the rest, you know. So if there, if there was only a few that embarked on the ark, that means the rest were, were destroyed. So that's that 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 that's my uh, cause cause only those that embarked in the ark were the were were the ones that, that and believed were the ones that were saved, and then so the rest were drowned. That that that's what I said. And and every and and so everyone else did not. Though everyone else that did not believe drowned. So there are only a few. That believed and and, and 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 embarked into the ark, which we know is Noah and his family. So the rest who did not believe that were not in the ark, that's it's common sense, drowned. Mm -hmm. so, of course, so, the Quran so, also so throws is, out his wife. Yep, yeah, so... Um, his, his wife. So... Right. So the, the Quran says that everyone except for uh, Noah and his family uh, perished in the flood. Um, why do you find this problematic? Well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that it, it proves that it's a global flood and not local because they were most drunk. Correct. Right. So uh, most Christians would okay. probably say that the flood of Noah is global as well. That's not demanded by the biblical text, but it would be the majority position. Uh, so are you, are you suggesting that the, the flood of Noah can't be global um, because of archaeological evidence? Uh, or, or no, how? it cannot. Even, 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 even through Bible, uh, uh, 
in the Bible itself. So basically, every flying creature, okay, every creature, even flying creatures, all right, uh, basically, they all drowned, okay? So everything drowned. So, so how does a flying creature drown? <clears throat> it has no place to land. So, right. so if it was local, all right, if it was local, they they have somewhere to land. There's there 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 there's a uh, there's tons of birds that that could that can migrate and travel for 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 long periods of time, and find somewhere to land. But there was no place to land. So that's why it says that all all living creatures, all living creatures, drowned. They died, even flying creatures. Okay, That's so why when 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 when, no, when so, Noah brought, okay. brought out the birds, I'm actually I'm actually very confused with the bird this back. Yeah, is he saying okay? So I think that he's saying that Muslims. I think that he's saying that Muslims will claim that their Quran indicates that it is probably a local flood more clearly than you could make a text no. from the biblical text and therefore since it was a local flood the quran is true i've heard this argument before it, and, but no, eric, eric okay first of all eric introduced himself as a christian yeah and yeah i know but i'm saying but from but because the uh text is my it, it is clear okay so why does this make you doubt okay, the quran so, so the quran is saying right oh yeah of course so 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 it, but because muslims say that 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 well most muslim he just said that um that uh they say is 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 a uh, local and then he just said uh some muslims say, say it's global i never heard that before i every muslim i met say, says that it's it's a local flood no, so uh but but basically uh, this this passage here is saying it for through my logical uh, reasoning and reading it is basically everyone that 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 believed w which were for you embarked in the ark and so the muslims are lying about their dropped. text so muslims lying about their text makes you uh disbelieve the quran right is that it yeah that, they, okay basically yeah it's a it's a, it's a lie right? it's a lie Something yeah, so I would have gone. Because, I am still because, uh, I don't know. What do you, Eric? Just cut yeah. to the chase. Do you believe in a local flood or a global flood? He believes in global. Global? What are you talking about? Or do you believe? I believe in a global flood. Uh, yeah, so, that's so what you're, I just you're said. confused because okay, so because I'm you're, you're confused and I, because and I'm, I'm bringing from I'm the Quran and I say that the and I and I'm saying that are going for a local yeah. flood. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I know. I I I heard your your, your debate with, with um. Yeah, I, I know. But it, but I'm saying that it's not a local flood. It's, yeah. It's if flood. I can get through, if I can get through the full point, okay, I think just, I got it. I know it's a little bit confusing, I but I got interrupted right in the middle. I understand that he's a Christian. What he's saying is that Muslims say their text describes a local flood in a way that the Bible does not. And if you go to their text, it actually describes what appears to be a global flood if you just read it at face value. No yes. less a global flood than you could possibly find in the, uh, in the Bible text. And since Muslims yeah, but, lie about this, that's an issue. I would like to yeah, add then, another, uh, one, one other point, hang on. If you go to the classical scholars, all the there are stories in, in uh, Al Tabari, some uh, hadith about, and all of them say that everyone died, like everyone in the world died. And there's even one that says that there was a woman with a baby who was climbing to the top of the tallest mountain in the world, and when the floodwaters got up to her, and when they got up to her neck, they got above her head. She held up her baby so that her baby would survive as long as possible. And if Allah would have spared anyone in the world, he would have spared them, but he did not. So the deceitfulness of Muslims <coughs> concerning their Quran is a reason to, and their 
other sources is a reason to doubt it and to doubt Islam. I think I, I, I Does, is that the my my uh, contention with the flood story just, in the Quran. Oh, wait, I want to I want to speak here. My contention with the yeah, flood yeah, story in the Quran. Probably, uh, well, that, that's nothing. <laughs> I said no apologetics. You're up. <laughs> Because yeah. Rob Christian also so, joined, so it's just saying Rob is ambiguous. Sorry. Yeah. That's all. So if you say that the Quran is defending a global flood, that actually, I would use that argument because I hold to a local flood. Okay, obviously I'd use that argument. So there you go. The Quran has falsified the scientific consensus that there was no global flood. I, I don't know why. But if Eric Blue is, is arguing that um, that he believes in a global flood, then the Muslim will say, "Hey, you and I believe both the same. It's just that we are engaged. We're coming at this at two different angles." So I, I wouldn't go down that trajectory. All I would say is, uh, I would defend a local flood, but that's not the main reason, or that's not the main argument I would use um, with respect to the Quran. For me, the, the every big fine creature died is in a local flood. Uh, okay, for me, the big... we're not going to have a debate over whether the flood is global yeah, or so for, or for me, the big difference is that in the Quran, Noah's wife, as well as one of his sons, drowns because of unbelief. But that, at the same time, an unnumbered okay. group of believers were among those saved in the ark. That is not in the Genesis story. All right, so... Uh... It's now unambiguous because Rob, Rob Christian didn't uh, end up being able to join. He was having some issues and it dropped. So did you want to give one of your reasons, uh, Rob, from Sentinel Apologetics? For yes. Why you don't, uh, and a very fun one. <laughs> uh, if you go to uh, Surah 47... And it's mm -hmm. Aya 15. Um, and I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Um, it speaks about the... Um, I'll, I'll read it out. It says, The similitude of the garden which those who keep their duty to Allah are promised, therein are rivers of water unpolluted, the rivers of milk, whereof the, the flower changes not, the flavor changes not, the rivers of wine, delicious to the drinkers, the rivers of clear run honey, therein for them is every kind of fruit, with pardon from their Lord. Um, but this is the four rivers of paradise. So you could put like an, a little abbreviation there. Um, the four rivers of paradise. Uh, that is dependent on the Talmudic and apocryphal recountings of the four rivers of Eden from Genesis. So my question or, or maybe my statement is that um like so I'll, I'll just reshare my screen again uh let's see here i'll do the entire screen so you guys can see this all right do you see do you, do you see this bit that i've highlighted here yep okay so this is in the legends of the jews and it speaks about the creation days, right? The most important work done on the third day was the creation of paradise and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And when you come down over here, it says, under each canopy, there is a table of precious stones, pearls, 60 angels stand at the head of every just man saying, go and eat the joy of the honey for thou hast busy thyself with the Torah and she's sweeter than honey. Drink of the wine preserved in the grapes since the six days of creation and so on and so on. Footnote 79 says this, these four streams are frequently mentioned in the legends. So compare with Second Enoch. Compare with the um, Pesekhtar uh, and the Agadat, Shikhtar, uh, and also look at Quran 47. So while in the Quran, the stream of oil is replaced by a stream of fresh water, it is just as this stream of balsam, which is frequently alluded to in the rabbinic literature. So the point here is that the what was considered part of the creation account, nothing to do with heaven, the Quran seems to um, misunderstand this 
that uh, it's to do with paradise. Unless a Muslim guest here can explain what's actually going on in, you know, oops, sorry. A Muslim guest here can explain what's actually going on in this, in this particular ayah. Is this to do with paradise or is this to do with once upon a time, this took place in the Persian Gulf with the four rivers, the Tigris, Euphrates, the Pishon and the Gihon. So maybe you could you could call it uh, the Quran confuses the four rivers of Eden with the four rivers of paradise or something. <laughs> yeah. So what's moment, your point? I... That the Talmud says one thing and the, the Quran says different. Yeah, like actually, that like... is the same kind of right. Right. That it takes it from it and then it's all muddled up. So it, it takes something that yeah, isn't takes... scripture. And then it meddles yeah. it. Yeah. The Bible never mentions the four rivers with those particular descriptions. Like it's, it, you know, it's honey, then wine, then milk. No, the yeah, Bible never does Rob, that. Rob, but we both agree, you and me, that Bible is not is, is not a reliable source of information. No, 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 no. The Bible we, never we mentions don't agree that. that. No, no, Rob agrees that's... with me. I heard him on other streams. He says that the Bible has mistakes, mm. errors, contradictions. No, that's not what he says, I'm sure. That's yeah, not yeah. what I say, no. Yeah, yeah. Here I the Quran is saying, Bible. as a matter of fact, that there are these four specific rivers. But then when we do a comparative uh, analysis of where these terms come from, the Quran is plagiarizing the Talmud. Ah, the okay, but this is the, your point. Ah, this is good old, like... Um... Copy, copy paste argument. Yeah, that, that's this is very easy to, to debunk. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> ignorant Islamophobes presuppose that Quran and Islam are, are supposed to be something new in design, right? And and when they see that Islam has similarities with other religions and traditions, they instantly scream like, "Oh, plagiarism, plagiarism!" Well, in fact, uh, sweetheart, not... you're not understanding the argument. This I'm is a rabbi. Yeah. Rabbis made this up. Let, let, yeah, let him make his point this. First. Let him make his this. point. Let, let him make his point. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you do realize that rab rabies, uh, rabbis, uh, they, uh, they wrote your Bible. You do realize that, right? No. Uh, no. Yes. No, they yes. did not. <laughs> where where, where Masoretic okay. texts come from? Elias, do you the, believe the Masoretic that text be is not our Bible, and they didn't write it? They tran the the rabbis we're, we're trans deviating, well, I'm sorry, the they didn't write the, the point. text. Authorship and transmission the aren't point. the same thing. Uh, I'm sorry, we're deviating from the point. Can you do you actually believe that there's going to be rivers of purified honey in in paradise? Yes. Do you believe? If that? Karen says so, of course, of course. Okay. So, do you believe that there's going to be rivers of milk? If Karan says so, sure. So yeah, I don't. Okay. Understand. Do you believe that's going to be rivers of wine? Sure. Okay. All of these descriptions come from Enoch and the Talmud, not the Bible. Okay. So Enoch they come and from the non-scripture. Human imaginations of what happened in the past, not in the future. What happened in the past? Any similar uh, listen, listen carefully, please listen carefully, listen carefully, right? Any similarities in other scriptures, traditions, customs, or beliefs of other religions or cultures can be attributed to, to the influence or echoes of the teachings of previous prophets who reached their nations at some point in time and conveyed the same message of Islam to their people that got either corrupted or misinterpreted by people over time, right? Well, what exactly don't you understand? The same, the same thing that they so, tell so you. So here's the thing, okay? So, so Elias, you can say that, but here's the thing: when you look at the evidence, the in evidence the doesn't support that supposition. No, no, it, it does say that because what you see, yes, it, it does say that in the Quran. Well, no, actually, it doesn't say that. It, it says does. that it's affirming the Torah and the Gospel, not that it's affirming oh, any random thing. But, but that's beside the point. You, you can. You can say that is what you believe, but that's not what fits the evidence because you can tell when one source is dependent on another source. 
And when you see the Quranic versions of stories, they're usually abbreviated versions of stories. They give the general outline and they expect the audience to know the details that the Quran is not explicitly conveying. And often the tafsirs reveal that the Muslims did know the details that the Quran is not actually conveying. And those details come from other writings. Now, here's the problem. The, the problem is that this is supposed to be the eternal speech of Allah. The Quran is supposed to be primary, but the evidence suggests that the Quran is derived from these texts. If your theory was correct, if the Quranic or the standard Islamic theory was correct, and other versions of these tales were corrupted from the Quran, then that's what the evidence should point no, to. No, 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 no. Uh, when you get into the technical details of comparing these passages, what you see time and time again is that the, the version that is not the Quran makes more sense of the text than the Quranic text. Often the Quran looks like it's confused details about this other story, which is longer, has more details, and then the Quran has an abbreviated shorter version that you can easily see as being derived from that longer version because of the, the nature of the details, the nature of the what we would view as confusion. Under your theory, what has happened is that other people have taken what was originally revealed in the eternal word of Allah given to previous prophets, and they have improved upon its clarity by adding their own details mm -hmm. yeah yeah correct, so can correct. i okay can i can i say something this is correct. okay so can you see this i i yes. can't really change the um so i just want to make sure you can see this all right when is the second slamonic apocalypse of enoch dated according to the latest in scholarship I'm highlighting it here. When, when is it dated? Oh, I thought it's a rhetorical question. Yeah, this is late first century. Okay. So, if you go to chapter eight, let's re let's read it about the taking of Enoch to the third heaven. And those men took me from there, and they brought me up to the third heaven, set me down there. Then I looked downward, and I saw paradise. And that place is inconceivably pleasant. And I saw the trees in full flower, and their fruits were ripe and pleasant smelling, and with every food and yield and giving off profusely a pleasant fragrance. And in the midst of them was the tree of life, at that place where the Lord takes a rest when he goes into paradise. And that tree is indescribable for pleasantness and fine fragrance and more beautiful than any other created thing that exists. And from every direction, it has an appearance which is gold-looking and crimson with the form of fire. Oh, by the way, how curious is fire language in 47, uh, in, in Quran uh, 47, 15. And it covers the whole of paradise, and it has something of every orchid tree and of every fruit, and its root is in the paradise of the exit that leads to the earth. Notice, this is all on earth. <laughs> and paradise is in between the corruptible and the incorruptible. Wow, there's, there's a clarification. It's in between. And here we go. And two streams come forth, one a source of honey and milk, and a source which produces oil and wine. And it is divided into four parts. And they go around with a quiet movement. And they come out into the paradise of Edom, between the corruptible and the incorruptible. And from there, they pass along and divide into 40 parts, and it proceeds in descent along the earth, and they have a revolution in their cycle, just like other atmospheric elements. So, let's read the Quran. Bro, uh, I can save you a lot of time, right? Uh, we, we already know this. Right? Even Th Tadeus, he ex explained to you, <laughs> like, an Islamic narrative, right? Well, why are you repeating it? Uh, well, let's read the Quran. Oh. We've just read a first century Slavonic text of Enoch, Let's read a 7th century Arabian text. Yeah, they are similar. They, they are similar. And it says, it says, Here is a parable of the garden which the righteous are promised. In it are rivers of water incorruptible. Oh! That, you, know the, you know how it's located between the incorruptible and the corruptible? 
rivers of milk of which the taste never changes rivers of wine a joy to those who drink and rivers of honey pure and clear in it there are for them all kinds of fruits oh yeah exactly what the slavonic text says and That's grace true. from their lord can those in such bliss be compared to such as shall dwell forever in the fire and be given to drink boiling water so that it cups up their uh, their bowels to pieces so did allah copy and paste this rob please tadeus already explained to you the islamic position about it right allah sent the same message to different prophets right right so those prophets conveyed the message right and it transformed in the oral tradition that later on got corrupted right and this is how it ended up in all those texts right but in the quran this is the actual original right this is the authentic version of that story right this is yeah. why we say quran it uh, uh, corrects uh, the, the previous text right so there's not much to say here uh, yeah, you can speak for so another two hours if you want but uh, i wouldn't say anything new about this like this is the position that we hold yeah so this is hilarious simple, yeah let me just ask you so simple question, so basically uh, is, allah is your sense... belief testable yeah of course it's in the quran and the quran is the word of allah so well how, how can you i disbelieve in the well word of allah? no that's not that's not a, a test that's the source of your belief but is it testable is it is it testable uh, yeah, in such a way yeah, that someone who yeah, is sure, not a muslim yes it, it is testable yes. so you're telling me the author of this text in the first century a.d late first century so we're talking after the the composition of the new testament right um Basically, and as the scholar says here, the book is basically a midrash, but the sparse plot is almost lost in the large amount of apocalyptic material that it carries. So you're telling me that a Muslim prophet in the late first century AD, where, six centuries before Muhammad, is accurately describing an amplification of Genesis 5 uh, and Genesis 2 as well with, with the Eden language. Um, and in this one place that the Quran speaks about specifically these four types of rivers, it's all correct. Like like the guy who wrote Second Enoch is is correct on this point because the Quran says so. That's your argument. No, that's not my argument. And that this knowledge was hidden secretly for however long. Because supposedly there weren't any prophets between uh, Isa and Muhammad, right? So it was hidden secretly all this time. Nobody knew it until suddenly someone wrote it down one time in the first century. And then it was repeated tons of times after the first century. But there's no written evidence of it before. It just suddenly appears out of nowhere. But it's really from a long time ago. You know, it's from before Jesus. But we have no evidence of that. Oh, just because you don't have an evidence of the manuscript from that time doesn't mean anything. It's, it's like me saying to you, oh, well, no, it doesn't no, no, that's, that's not the question. So we don't base things based on the physical manuscripts that we have alone. We base things based on who talked about it, who recorded things about it, who, uh, who referenced it, who went and wrote something based on it, if it's part of the conversation, then it's no. So that's why we have, uh, that, that's why we can trace, we can say, oh, we have a manuscript for XYZ and it's only from the fifth century. But we know it was composed in the second century because some dudes in the second century talked about it. And also we know that it was credited to this person, people discussed it and it was from this particular person who lived in the second century. So even though our manuscripts from the fifth century, we can still say that something was written in the second century. But what you're saying is that things hide for hundreds, thousands of years. No one knows about, no one has any references to it. Suddenly one of them appears and then suddenly everybody's talking about that thing. But it's really based on something that was mostly forgotten, but it's once had been known. Yeah. That's just, that's, that, that's a ridiculous point. Yeah, because I mean, after the point get... that this was written in Second Enoch, the rabbis picked it up and they discussed it a ton. Because it it's, was it's made no, up then. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's no different to Peter Jackson's interpretation of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, right? It's no different to saying 
Peter Jackson's interpretation of Lord of the Rings is the original Lord of the Rings. No, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings is the original Lord of the Rings. Peter Jackson is merely interpreting Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Just like the author of Second Enoch and the Talmudic writers after, th th this is their interpretation of the Genesis story. But the Quran thinks that the, that the Second Enoch author and the Talmudic authors are the original authors of that account. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. So then why does the Quran, why doesn't the Quran directly utilize the, gen, the original Genesis story? Because Look, it's let me original. answer you. Genesis is not let the original answer Genesis you. story. We don't believe let you. me answer. Thaddeus, Thaddeus, I'll give you another one. Have you guys done... Okay, firstly, no, you talk no, about river and wine. Huh. But according so, to your book, hold on. according oh, to pause, your book, Jesus will drink wine in heaven. Pause, pause, according to your own Bible too, pause. In the book of Matthew, means, ultimate life, you, you, you have a hearing problem. Jesus says, you should just throw Jesus him out. He's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. He's not, uh, just in case he can't hear me, can heaven. someone else tell him to, sh to be quiet? So there, so according to your own can book, you hear him? You, you, you no, can you? I, I think that he can, you. can, he he can hear eyes. him totally fine. He's just talking over everyone, so just throw him out. All right, he's gone. Hello. Uh, okay, so I, I heard you say don't mute me right as I hit mute. I've unmuted you. I hear you. This isn't I can hear you. I can hear you. You don't just come right. in here just and start talking and start speak. blasting away. Okay, let me talk. Let okay. me talk. Let me talk. Can I talk no, now? No, you need to pause. Okay. Pause. Calm According down. to the book, Jesus said that he will drink river of wine. Take it. You drink. He will drink wine Dude. in heaven. Oh my goodness All right. gracious! Just forget it. He, he has no interest in having a discussion. He just wants to come in here and blast his monologue. <sighs> and I have no interest just, in, in letting just, him do that. Yeah. No, 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 no. The Quran is not... The Quran is just saying it verbatim. Literally, the Quran's like, here is a parable of... How can it say verbatim it's if it's in a different language? All I'm saying is, and what the scholars are noticing, is that when you read this statement here in the 7th... This is not, by the way, guys, for goodness sake, this is not rocket science. <laughs> the Quran is just saying it's that a That the Egyptians had? I mean, for goodness okay. sake... It's it's not rocket science. Yeah. So, Elias, which prophet revealed this text that is found? Which text, Quran? So, so this material was originally revealed to someone, right? This material was written. Uh, I'm so, hearing someone in the background. So we can we can hear you, Eric. For some reason, you're not appearing on the screen, but we can hear you. And that he was making a good point. He was asking, right. why is this coming from a prophet? What prophet did it come from? Right. Where is it in the in the main in the scripture that they have with them, according to the Quran? Where is the scripture that people had with them where they could check and see that this is true? Because the only writings that people had with them at that time was this thing composed after Jesus, between Jesus and Muhammad. Which writing? Are you do you want to do another Enoch? one in the list? Are you talking about? Uh, okay, so 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 so, Elias, do you want to respond to which prophet originally revealed this material? Because it was clearly so what material revealed before we're talking the about? time. Which the, material? The, the, the specific, the the rivers thing, the the four rivers, the rivers of milk and rivers of honey, because it's found in Enoch, which is not considered part of the Torah or part of the Gospel. So, okay, so you're going to assert that First Enoch was actually written by Enoch. No, First Enoch was written by no, this is another Enoch. random this random, is not even just like Enoch. the rest so of the Bible. Second Enoch, whatever, Second Enoch, sorry. Yeah. The source of all your texts are Jewish rabbis, right? Uh, 
This is the Islamic position. No, 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 it's not. Uh, Your Quran wait, says that the book is wait, with what us. Do you mean that, what do you mean that's the Islamic position? What do, what do you mean that's the Islamic position? We because believe that these books they, are, are just uh, uh, oral traditions of the Jews written by Jewish sages, and that's about it, right? Well, then you are correcting your poor, stupid Allah who accidentally says that people have it with them between their hands. They have it with them, they read it, they have it between their hands, but your poor, stupid Allah should have known that that's wrong. So thank you for correcting him. Maybe Allah was too stupid to know that the Jews and Christians didn't have it, so he accidentally said that they had it. So thank again, you for clarifying. Again, please. <laughs> Maybe uh, yes. in the 7th century, some Jews, some Christians right. really did have the uh, authentic gospel. <laughs> no, the problem is that he said uh, that the okay. Romans are Jews. Oh, excuse me, the Romans uh, are Christians. Right. If the Mary, Romans are Christians, Mary. then, the, then the Romans had the scripture, according to Allah. But again, which one? There are so many Bibles to choose from. Which one do you like? Uh, okay, you, okay. You, you are being particularly stupid. We're, we're, we're going in circles. We've been over all of this. I just want to ask one question to Elias, and then we're going to move on. What is the standard by which we can test whether the Quran is from God? Because all of your arguments amount to, we know it because the Quran says. So what is the standard that a person who is not already believing in the truth of the Quran can test its accuracy? Uh, Quran gives you a falsification test. Create something like it. And, and well, it looks and, like okay. I created so, something well, like that in the first century. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, what are, you need to be more specific, though, because when I read that text, it seems to say that the person who tries it is the judge. And people have tried it, and people have thought they passed it. So, the, the way it's phrased is if you don't think it's from a law, you try to make something like it. Yeah. And, you'll, and the idea is you will see that you can't do that. But the yeah. problem is both in Muhammad's time and in times after Muhammad, including modern times, people have created works that they think are like it. So what is the objective criteria to judge whether something is like it? Objective criteria is it should have the same influence, right? It should be... Uh, of, of, no, uh, no, magnitude. that's incredibly silly. Oh, 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 so... right. No, pop, Mary, Mary, the Bible has the same influence as the Quran. Ah, not really. Again, which Bible? Which Bible? Oh, what do, what do you mean? No, what? No, no, no. The message of the Bible. Ah, the you message. You cannot go to which Bible. So, we're shifting it, right? The, the message is what influences people. Um, we're not talking about the message. We're talking about the book, right? The book. Okay, show the, me the, book. the Quran. Between two, between two covers, show me the entire Quran. One uh, Quran that has everything in it between two covers. It's, it's show it to me. Is it the Hoffs? Is it the Hafs? Oh, it's just the one. Okay, so whenever they went to standardize, hang on. Whenever they went to standardize the Hafs, what did they do? Did they ask people to stand up and recite it, or did they collect written documents? Which did they do? I know you're frustrated. Answer now. Answer now. No, because you're being stupid, and people are not calling you on how stupid you are being. So answer now. When they went to standardize the Hafs, how did they do that? Did they ask people to recite or did they gather manuscripts? Both. They did both. No, they didn't. They gathered manuscripts. Oh, yeah, and they what did, did they, they, why did they need the manuscripts? They also checked uh, recitation. Why did they need the manuscripts? We double checked it. It's no, because, because this is a written document and it always has been. Not only that, but the what errors the that crept into the Quran, the reason why the Qur'at are different is be are almost all writ uh, scribal errors. They are not oral errors. They are not mistakes you would make if you were speaking it. They are mistakes you would make if you were writing it. Now, whenever Uthman and Ibn Thabit uh, whenever U Uthman, well, whenever Ibn Thabit with Umar went to collect the Quran, he listened to people who were reciting parts of it. But what else did he do? He did what? He collected written documents. That's what I said. So that is because it was not found in the memories of the Muslims complete. No, in the battle, my qu now, I have a question for you. Can the yeah. Quran be abrogated now? Can pieces of it be abrogated now? Or can it only be abrogated during the lifetime of Muhammad? Uh, it, it can also be abrogated after. Okay, so after Muhammad, pieces will be abrogated. 
really? by Allah. So whatever you happen to have at this moment is actually the Quran and everything else that gets forgotten or distorted or destroyed, that wasn't the Quran. No, so whatever it used to say poverty. wasn't the Quran. Use the word well, no, it, 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 part of the Quran is just no longer influential, right? That's so you actually don't have the complete. It's actually the opposite of what you said, Mary, right? That you don't have the complete Quran because parts of it have been abrogated. They're in it, but they don't apply, so they've been forgotten, so no one knows what the complete Quran looks like today. No, we, we do know how it looks like. Well, which is it? Either parts, either the parts that were forgotten are abrogated and, and that they're not part of the Quran anymore or they were never were i suppose or they were part of the quran and they still are part of the quran you when when mary made her argument you tried to say no they're still part of the quran even if they're abrogated now when i said that my argument that parts are forgotten and we thus don't have the complete quran you said no they're not part of the quran so which is it the, those two are opposites well, well, there... opposites. The parts that are abrogated are abrogated. And what we have now is what we have now. So do we have right. parts okay. that What's are abrogated now plan? inside the yeah, Quran the that you can plan? have between your hands? The Hafs, the Warsh, I don't care which one. In the in the Quran that you can have now, well, if they are, are there abrogated the... portions of it that are not in effect? We do know some abrogated verses, but uh, they, obviously they are not in the Quran if they are abrogated from the Quran. Okay, so they are inside the Quran and they are abrogated. No, they are not inside the Quran. They are outside. No, no he's so, referring to like the the so, two fields of gold of Adam or and what. Yeah, but, but what I'm what saying. Part of so I'm Quran. asking whether or not there are abrogated verses inside right. the Quran now, or whether or not everything is accurate now that is inside the Quran, and it doesn't matter what order it was revealed in, it's still in effect. Everything in the Quran is the Quran right now. Okay, is that was not effect, my question. Wait, is it all in effect? Is it, is it all effect? abrogated? What do you mean by all? So, it, excuse me, is there anything is in it? it? No. Is none of it abrogated? Is there anything in the Quran that is no longer in effect? Mm, yeah, I think, yeah, there are some verses that are not in effect. Okay, so why are they in the Quran? Uh, for recitation, for context. Why? Why would you need them? If, if there's a law that has been abrogated and removed, and, and, why and would it be in the Quran? The difference. For a citation. Why are some abrogated verses forgotten and taken out of the Quran and others left in it? Because Allah said so. No, Allah uh, didn't say so. So yeah, There are verses of abrogation where it talks about abrogation. That we will well, yeah. At what, that when, when huge amounts of the Quran was lost, when was most of the Quran that we know of that was lost, when did it get lost? I never got lost. It uh, got abrogated. So all the surahs that used to be much longer that yeah. nobody could remember after the Battle of Yamama. Right, because it got right. abrogated. Right. right, so it got, yeah. after when Muhammad died, he had a Quran. And the Quran you recite today is not the Quran of Muhammad. No, it's the same. So instead, it's the Quran well, of Ibn Thabit. Wait, 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 wait. He you disagrees, it's the same, yeah. But you're... What you, all, you earlier said that verses were abrogated after Muhammad, yeah. so they can't yeah. be the same. And they're no, it is the same. It is the same. So, so you're saying that also recited that those verses that we have right now, all those verses that we have right now in ten kiraats, Prophet Muhammad wasalam, he recited them all multiple times. And when I, I actually don't believe that, but regardless of that, regardless of that, at the time that he died. He had been reciting, and the Muslims were reciting a certain amount of stuff. Is that what is in the Quran when it, right now? Some abrogated verses were obviously abrogated, and they are not in the Quran right now. Okay, so after Muhammad died, your Quran was changed. No, it wasn't. Okay, you just said that it was. You said that there, no, when they were reciting it, hang on, well, when they were reciting it, and no, they knew, the hang on. So when Muhammad died, they were reciting the big long verse about the uh, the two valleys, correct? And I don't think it's it's after Muhammad. So. Yes, it was. It was forgotten because of Yamama. I'm not sure if it was after. I'm not sure about that. So they were reciting it. Up until Yamama, and then when Yamama happened, a lot of people died. With whom? Because they put all the best memorizers at the front. Because Allah said that none of his Quran would be forgotten. You know, he'd preserve it forever. So if you put them in the front, 
then obviously they couldn't die. They can all die because then parts of the Quran would be lost. But what happened? They died and parts of the Quran were lost. According to you, they were just wrong about those being parts of the Quran. So when everybody's upset that parts of the Quran were lost, you're saying, oh, you stupid people. Didn't you know that those things that Muhammad said, that those things that Muhammad was having you recite, that those aren't really the Quran? It's only the Quran of uh, Ibn Thabit that's the, <laughs> that's the Quran. Apparently he is your prophet. If he's even the version that you have, which he probably isn't, because uh, what was it, Hajjaj? also said that he compiled the Quran, which is really interesting. You have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Please open Bukhari uh, 4481. <laughs> okay, just, just open it and, and read it. I, I don't know how to explain you any clearer. Right? I, I will read that hadith to you. Okay? It yes. says, Umar said, our best Quran reciter is Ubay, and our best judge is Ali. And in spite of, of this, we leave some of the statements of Ubay because U Ubay says, I do not leave anything that I have heard from the Allah's messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Why Allah said, we do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth one better than it or similar to it. Chapter 2, verse 106. What exactly don't you understand? Like, this is laughable. L absolutely laughable. Like, how well, many it might be laughable. Simple but... Things <laughs> but the one uh looks like we may have lost mary Whoa. so i do Can need I to wrap this example from the list yes uh we do need to wrap this up soon um i, I want to get your second example but i also want to get one from wyatt uh, because he didn't have a chance to give one earlier so uh, why i imagine you've seen enough of the stream to know the game here uh, we have majority yeah, of the later surahs <laughs> available and about half of the yeah. early surahs uh, um <laughs> oh teddy bear uh oh i better not see a, a uh, electric saw coming out <laughs> all right um teddy here thinks um sir 1822 uh, so we do have an 18. The the, Sadly. the murky water. Well, we ha we have a different one for 18, but we're just trying to do one per. Yeah. Uh, per per Can you do so. another one? I mean, there's that's a verse. Come on, 1822. Uh, I won't put it on the list, but you want to explain why that's problematic? Um, yeah. So the sun sets in the pool of murky water. Scientific, classic scientific error in the Quran. Well, what do you mean that's an error? I, I thought the Quran, I thought the sun did set it in a pool of murky water. And excuse my tripping over my words, it's 4 a.m. and I've been up mm -hmm. and on the stream for 13 hours. <laughs> right. So um, the sun doesn't literally set. Yeah, because it doesn't. Um, it only appears. To it's set. a metaphor. Um, no, it's not. Um, no. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, of course, it's a metaphor, right? Okay. You you bring me... Actually, no, let's do it this way. Mm -hmm. You know how many verses in the Bible I can find you where it talks about sun? You know, let's get back to the Quran. I'm, I've been listening yeah. to you for a couple hours now. Yeah. It's all you do is you go. Bible, right? It's always yeah. about the Bible. you got to understand each text in its own context. Okay, you so understand say... the Quran like we understand it, like Muslim scholars understand it. Well, so, no, but no, I'm not saying that you should just take Christians' words for it. I'm saying that you should understand but the Muhammad text even the clarified the, what he means the historical by literary the context setting. in which it, it was written. Um, and in the case of the Quran, uh, unless you have evidence that early Muslims, and I definitely have evidence that early Muslims understood it the other way, that they understood it literally. Unless you have under evidence that early Muslims understood it to be a metaphor, then I'm going to understand it in what I know to be the historical literary context. And that's that people thought that Dulcarnain, which is a stand in for Alexander the Great, actually traveled to the end of the world and actually saw where the sun set. So it doesn't say Alexander so, the Great, and nobody um, understood it uh, literally yes, among is. those scholars. Yeah, that is. All right. 
That is. Can you pull up Sunan Abu Dawood 4002? Uh, yes, we, we certainly can do that. Mm -hmm. So it says, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah, والسلام, who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, do you know where, where this mm -hmm. sets? Uh, I, I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it, it sets in a spring of warm water. Okay, he also used a metaphor. Thank you. What, 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 wait, wait. How is that a metaphor? Let's forget the Where does it say it's not a metaphor? metaphor. Can, you, can you show me where it does it where say? Does it's where does it say it's not a metaphor? Where does when you it look say? at the sun, when it you look at the sun anything. near the, the near the sea, where does it set? It, it looks so, like it sets in in, in, uh, in in the water. It's just a so, metaphor. Uh, Elias, do you seriously think that I can just take any random speech and pretend it's a metaphor? Unless it says, unless I By the way, specifically say this is not a metaphor? I mean, is that seriously the argument you want to make? Discussion. Oh, I mean, it is relevant. There are so why many verses where, where it uh, talks like metaphorically about the sun. I can pull up any of them and, and just claim, okay, this is literal. The point is, is that the Syriac legend of Alexander, the two-horned one, the only time in other, the only mention of the sun setting or rising at the extreme ends of the earth happens to be in the Syriac legend of Alexander and the Quran. And so you have to wonder. I'm sharing my screen, by the way, uh, Thaddeus. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't notice. Sorry. Not on top That's of right. the game. <laughs> oh, wait. Am I sharing? The... Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So notice here you have the Alexander's travels. The Quran and Alexander romance both have it that Dulcanane travel a great deal in the Quran story, Dulkanain, God gave him unto everything a road, or more literally, we gave him the means of everything. He travels as far as the ends of the earth to the place on the earth where the sun sets, which is the west, and the place on the earth where the sun rises, which is the east. And sure enough, Alexander's travels, he's known as the two-horned one because this, the, the rising and the setting of the sun is like the two horns. That's what that's that's the metaphor. He he's the two horned one because he's the one that's been to the far east and the far west. Well, that, does it say in the Quran that this is Alexander? No. The, what does Dulcanain translate to? Uh, the many, many different uh, interpretations. Of no, translated literally. What what does it translate to? Two horn, two horn. Yeah. Yes. Only one person in history was designated the two-horned one. Ah, you can even see no, it on no, the really. Yes. Cyrus wasn't called the two-horned one. Yeah, I'll, let's go over here. So we have here, the Syriac legend matches many details in the five parts of the verses, Alexander being the two-horned one, journey to the edge of the world, punish, punishment of evildoers, Gog and Magog. How curious. The fact that you have even Gog and Magog connected with the with the setting of the sun stuff and Dulcanin. Well, Gog and Magog is also mentioned in the Syriac legend. Well, we've been through this. This is like me saying that uh, Epic of Gil Gilgamesh mentions Noah and Bible mentions Noah. So Bible copied... Uh, but uh, I have Epic no issue with that. The thing I is, know you I have, have no, no issue with that, that because you believe that Bible is corrupted and contains errors, mistakes. No, no that, no, that doesn't no. lead to the Bible being corrupted. The point is, I have no issue with the cultural memory right. of the Code of Hammurabi and the Atrahasis Epic and the Epic of Gilgamesh as being the backdrop for the Genesis account. Oh, you see? Whereas you, if you're going to use that argument, Elias, okay, if you're going to use that argument against the Bible, then um, you're admitting um, that the Quran is using that using the Syriac legend of Alexander. You, you already heard the Muslim position, right? Many prophets were sent with the same message, their message. <laughs> with, uh, so so you have a prophet about half a century prior to the Quran uh, composing, and by the way, this is a Christian legend, okay? These are, these are Christ, it's a Syriac Christian legend of Alexander. Six, no, actually not even 600, this would be like nine centuries after Alexander the Great. So it's, it is heavily embellished and just because the Quran is obviously can't, it, you know, can't be an error. So whatever the Quran affirms, you retroject that back anachronistically and and then assert that the prior apocryphal writings wherever they match 
happens to be true because the Quran says so. We are going in circles, right? I'm not going. I'm going to say the same exact thing like that, that I was saying to you, right? Even the Jews, right. I, I can use the Jews uh, for my advantage, right? Even the Jews believe that there was sent like millions of prophets, right? If you open the Talmud, it says millions of prophets, right? In, in, in Islam, we were like a uh, hundred thousand or something, right? It's, it's issue dispute the number, right? The, the, the Jews believe that, right? That were millions millions of prophets that were sent all around the world right with the same message right so they pretty much have the same interpretation so what do you want uh, with me right I i'm giving do you, you the same do you agree thing. do you agree with the summary here look no, look at the not. summary the no, horns no. of alexander have had varied symbolism they represent him as a god as a son of god as a prophet and a, a, a propagandist of the most high as something approaching the role of a messiah and also as a champion of allah they represent him as a world conqueror who subjugated the two horns or ends of the earth, the lands of the rising and of the setting sun. Yeah, but this is easily debunked by, by, the, by the fact that Alexander was a Hellenistic pagan, right? And the, oh, the Quran talks about, the talks about a mon you. monotheist, right? It talks about I monotheist. I agree with you. So you Dur Kanain, the Quran thinks he's some... No, he doesn't dude. think. It's just not the same When person. real history shows that he's a polytheist and a pagan. Exactly. So it cannot but you be can't Alexander. get around the fact that he's yourself. called the two You're horned one. Yourself. You can't That's... ignore the fact that Alexander is the only one in history called the two horned one. Man, I, I so why was this revealed? Hang on. Really why was can't... this revealed about? Why was this revealed about yes, dual carnage? What happened? So the Jews came to him and asked us, "Can you tell us of dual carnage?" Remember that? Well, we've had this discussion. So, uh so the Jews came and said, can you tell us of dual Carnain? By which they meant Alexander the Great. And so he went off for a while and he was all in worries because he wasn't sure whether or not this dude was a prophet or not. He eventually decided that he was a prophet and, quote, revealed all of the stuff about him from this legend. And we also talked about how the real Alexander the Great didn't really go west. He only went east. He went east, he went south, but he didn't go west. By the read, Mary, just read this on the screen. Yeah, I've highlighted it uh, by Ibn Kathir. So it says, most of these stories come from the myths of the people of the book, Jews and Christians, and the fabrications and lies of their heretics. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and he's not wrong there because the Syriac legend is, a, a, that it is exactly what it is. It well, it's, is not it's a storybook. A it's like Harry story. Potter. It's just pretend. Yes. It's made up. It's not a lie. It's just an imaginary story. Muhammad apparently didn't least, understand that fiction existed. Yeah, at least he's admitting that the so-called rising place of the sun and the setting place of the sun, which only comes from this legend about the two-horned one. And he's like, yeah, most of these stories come from the myths of the people of the book. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's, very right. simple. It's, it's very simple. It's very simple. Just one point. Very, very simple point. Does the Quran okay. say that this is Alexander the Great? No. Does the description yes. of Dul Karnain yeah, because does, he... does the description of Dul Karnain match the description of Alexander? No. So it's not Alexander. Okay. Damn. Does Dul Karnain no. does is that God the nice argument? Nice argument. argument. Uh, so he's got to go to sleep. I need to get going because it's four thirty a.m. and I have okay. church at. 10 o'clock, so five and a half hours from now. And that that's when it actually starts. So I need more time before that to, to get there and whatnot. So I really do need to sign up. I'm good. So uh, we're not going to open up any more arguments. However, uh, we will have uh, a round for everyone to give their, their closing thoughts. So I'm going to take them in the order they are on my screen, starting with Nicodemus, who amazingly has been here the whole freaking time with me, which is just insane. Yep, that's about right. It's insane. I I really appreciate you having me on. This has been uh, amazing. I uh, This is my second stream that I've done. I feel like I'm starting to get my uh, feet wet here and my confidence up, so I appreciate that greatly. Um, let me plug a couple of things, if I may. Yep. Um, uh, so it's upcoming works. I apologize. I'm trying to carry too many watermelons at once. I've been talking about a video that I'm putting up about censorship, something I've been uh, afflicted by on every level. It's been insane. I've got video evidence of all that and uh, legal uh, advice on uh, from a lawyer, from, from a lawyer, how to combat some of that. 
and and so on its implications in a video coming up called is ai replacing god so please look for that hopefully in about another week i'll get that done um doing the last touches on a children's book um hopefully that's done and by the end of the month i was going to publish that on amazon but someone's giving me some other options so if not on amazon in about a month look for that a few months down the road from a real publisher god willing that's called to be here it's for um broken homes really um yeah, it's just a great book. You know, it's uh, it's one I really recommend. It's I've got two stories. One's a novella for uh, older children and young adults, really. More detailed, 100 pages. That's waiting for a professional editor. That's uh, on the shelf until like our praise funds or or find. If you're an editor, if you're a children's book editor, please reach out to me. That's uh, that's been done for five years, and I haven't been able to afford it. To do, get that done but i really want to get that out there my children's book uh my picture book rhyming book is the same story just um you know s summed up also powerful that's the one that's going to be published in about a month or so and they're called to be hue to be hue please look out for it and yeah my channel i've been censored um it takes me like a couple of weeks give or take to get edited on content on there i don't do streams like um, you guys do i do different kinds of things so please give me some support there because uh what i've been through there has been insane thank you for your yep. support your prayers your time and god bless yeah absolutely i i definitely encourage people to check out uh nicodemus's channel uh since i just created this stream like right before it started there's nothing in the video description but i'll copy it over from the first version or you can go over there and check that out uh, on your channel if you don't already have it i would put on the about page how people can uh, support the the gofundme projects for those books okay, so you can you. edit your about page on your your channel for people who are interested in that mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, Rob is up next, but first from Ask, Answerer, Answer, Answerer, Answerer, uh, that's an off title. Has How long has this been discussed? How long, ha how long has been this discussion? 13 hours? Wow. Well, actually, 13 and a half as of right mm -hmm. now. It'll probably be about 13.45 by the time we actually sign off. So, uh, Rob, I'll, I'll get your final thoughts, but... Before you get to those, uh, there was a question from Truth Defenders. Um, would you be interested in setting up a debate to defend the local flood position against someone who has the global flood position is the gist of the moment. <laughs> oh my gosh, here we go again. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like I mean if you're not I'm interested, just say you're not interested, I mean. Yeah, I, look. I, I'm going to be releasing a science series soon on my channel. Uh, hey. I'm going to do like an A to Z approach. Um, my this is this is actually a passion project of mine because my field is yeah, in science. Really good so what I want to do is I want to um, uh, you know go from an ancient Aryan slash concordus route with respect to the Genesis story, the creation story. All the way up to Not the Tower yet. of Babel, and that'll be basically. I'll be releasing that later this month, okay. um, and I'm and I'm calling it God mm -hmm. in the Universe, and that's basically it. And uh, yeah, uh, I expect SFT yep. to, if he wants to engage with it, refute that series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will uh, get Rob's channel description added to the video sometime tomorrow. Um, you can just search for Sentinel Apologetics if you're in a hurry mm -hmm. to, to find the link to that. Mm -hmm. uh, Zara Ber Berserk, ex Shia truth seeker. By the way, I have to head out, guys. So blessings to all of you. Yep. Oh, you real, quick, uh, real, quick, uh, real quick, Rob. Sorry. Um, yep. Go ahead, Wyatt. Yeah, so on my last stream, I reviewed Kent Hovind versus Nadir Ahmed. Have you seen that debate? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be a, an odd debate. I, I, I'll need to see that one. <laughs> I'll send you a link. It was hilarious. Can't... Yeah, send it to me, man. 
Yeah. Thaddeus, do you agree? It was hilarious. Yeah. So I, I watched a portion of that with why, and it was, it was Kent throwing the Bible under the bus to Multiple try times. to. Yeah. Wow. So so, uh, Nadir is obviously not the greatest debater in the world. Do you know who? Um, do you know who the moderator he, of that would have been? Stephen Anderson he, on his pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Steve Anderson standing no, there. Yeah. No, Rob, it was Kenny Bomber. It, it, close. It, it was uh, Kenny, Kenny Bomber. So, wow, so. wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, wife slapper. So, you know, uh, Nadir gave his two arguments that he always gives about the the seed, and instead of you know like properly answering him, uh, Kent was like. Oh, you see, this is why you have to use the King James. It says least instead of smallest. So therefore the King James is the only Bible. And and then Oh my gosh. It was, oh, no. And then uh Nadir tried to go to the Greek, right? He he tried even though Nadir has no clue what the Greek is, because <laughs> he, he tried to go to the Greek. Oh no. And he's like, Oh, you see, this is a problem because you're relying on the Alexandrian manuscripts, and, and Nadir's like <laughs> What the heck are you talking about? I'm just on Bible Hub here. I don't know. The Greek. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he throw. So he, oh, and there is no textual variant to be clear on this. It's just that the King James used least in an archaic sense that meant smallest based on the context. This is but a classic example King... of an. Yeah, this is a classic Go example ahead. of an unmovable. This is a classic example of an. What's it called? What's it saying? Unmovable wall. This is an unmovable, unlimited force. Or yeah, so like uh, uh, yeah, unmovable, irresistible un force irresistible and an unmovable force, force. unmovable uh, object. No, irresistible yeah, yeah, yeah. force, unmovable Ooh. object. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? What an epic yeah, so clash it, of titans right there. That's right. Yeah, uh, the worst two debaters faced off. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Um, I need Rob, to check this out. Can you send can Thaddeus? You me? Me? So, uh, Rob, I need you to send Thaddeus the exact edition of the Legends of the Jews because I looked for one by Brill and I couldn't figure out which one you're using. And I really need that book. So, could you send like the biographical, yeah, okay. the bibliogra yeah. bibliographical data, rather? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, yeah, it's, it's, uh, let me just quickly get the, um, here it is. It's the, it's the 2003 edition that I have by Brill, by mm -hmm. um, Paul Radden. It's by the Jewish Publication Society. Specifically. Ah, hang on, you I'm know. trying to pull up. Uh, uh... It's the 2003 second way. edition. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so uh, anyway, yeah, guys, I, I, I have to go. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, yeah, and thank you, Zara. Yep, I'm I'm about to get you to you, Alonzo okay. Harris's secretary. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Zara Berserk, uh, mm -hmm. and I just had another super chat. Uh, very much appreciate your donation for both of you human kirk tip of the hat to mary well done so thank you mm -hmm. both for your support it means a lot to me obviously i'm not making an income or anything close to do it to that by doing this nor do i want to um, but i do very much appreciate the gesture mm -hmm. so alonzo harris is secretary aka wyatt what are your closing thoughts um, my closing thoughts is, uh, number one, uh, Teddy here told me to unsubscribe to David Wood for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a little mm -hmm. afraid, a little afraid. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, second of all, um, Hello? I'm going to be having a stream on the last day of Ramadan. So, um, Elias, you're welcome. You're welcome to join. It seems that you Which have channel? some pretty good um, House of Hikmah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm the House of Hikmah channel. So um, just search that on YouTube. I, I, um, I didn't understand what you, what you I'll, I'll type it in the chat for you. 
House of Hikma. There you go. Uh, um, I don't know how to spell it. I'll, I'll type it in for you. A house in Hikma. House. House. Of it, it's Hikma. also linked in the original video description. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, that, yeah, so. It's all right, don't worry. Yeah, so that's pretty uh, much. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. My, huh? So, Christian Projects 2023, just to hold on a second. Go ahead, Wyatt. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, I'm trying to grow my channel on watch hours. I'm probably going to have to delete a bunch of videos before I get uh, access to Super Chats. But once I get access to Super Chats, if someone makes it rain, I'm going to um, hire a part-time stripper, namely Muhammad Hijab, to... <laughs> Um, help me, help me with the super chats. So, um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, so definitely check, take a look at that stream. It's already posted on his channel. Um, my plan is to be a part of that as well. So check that out. Uh, so Elias, you are up next. Um, uh, You'll have final words? Yep, final words. But before you you give your your final words, I did want to ask you a question. Would you be interested in me scheduling a, a stream for you on my channel, where you would be the uh, only guest, and you know we could discuss a topic of your choice? Oh, that sounds interesting. But uh, I, I don't know if I can make uh, make it. Like you, you're American, right? The, the time zones are yeah. brutal. Right. So, uh, you know, I'd work around your schedule. We can work out the exact details and, and see if we can get something on the books for that. Um, or, or you know, you if you subscribe to the channel and you see, you'll get notifications of when I'm live streaming and you can just hop into any stream because I typically open up all my live streams for live questions at the end. Yeah, so sure. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just hop in probably. Okay, sounds good. So your closing thoughts. How much time do I have? Uh, as much as you like. Oh. Okay, so I'll make an argument. You know, not, not two hours, but... You know, yeah, no, 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 I'm not David Wood. I'm not David Wood. <laughs> two minutes, whatever you need. No, no, no. I didn't have much time to like uh, go uh, after Christianity, right? So I'll take it now. I'll take it now. Usually I was on, on the defensive. Right, so but my argument, the one argument that I like against Christianity, right, it's actually in, in the Bible. It's actually in the Bible. By their fruits you shall know. And this is probably my favorite verse in the Bible, right? It's very simple, right? If Christianity was true, majority Christian countries wouldn't look like Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0, but they do because Christianity is false and it serves as a magnet to everything satanic. When Jesus comes back, who will he side with? Huh? All places where Christians are in majority are pits of Satan, where sins reign supreme. When you worship an abomination, you become an abomination. It is said, by the fruits you shall know them. No other religion in the world produces a more rotten fruit than a Christian one. Let's just check those fruits. Just glance over the Christian societies. They drown in alcohol, drugs, interest, LGBT, gambling, porn addiction, skyrocketing suicide and divorce rates, rampant racism, Tinder culture, hookup culture, bikini culture. Everyone has tattoos, smoking oh, wow. weed, junk food, estranged families, single mothers, feminists, people having two dads, transgenders, pronouns, people identifying as God knows what. People marrying their dogs and substituting having kids with you know what secular means. Cloud chasers would sell their own mothers for likes and views. These are your Christian heroes in your Christian societies. Women are immodest. Uh, everyone had five pair partners before they reach 18 years old. Christian men, uh, effeminate, self absorbed, shave daily. Right? These are the fruits of Christianity. Do you really think that when Jesus Christ comes, he will side with you? You uncircumcised? You worshiping three gods, having no laws except the liberal ones, you, uh, supporting LGBT movements. Come on, man, this is crazy. Sure, uh, the only argument that you have against the Muslim societies, right, is poverty, right? But again, poverty is not a sin. LGBT is, liberalism is, democracy is. So by their fruits, you shall know them. Look at the Muslims, look at the Christians, right? 
Which countries have a uh, death penalty for LGBT? Mm -hmm. And what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Bible says exactly what we do, right? We are the true followers of Christ. We are the true followers, even of your Bible, that we don't even uh, accept. So by the fruits, you shall know them. And that's all that I wanted to say. All right. And uh, I'm last. You, uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, and, and Mary can use her final words to, to rebut that. Um, but thank you for coming on the stream today, Elias. Uh, you know, that last little little bit was a bit of a tirade against Christianity, but that's all right. Uh, for the most, for you know, pretty much without exception, you've been very polite, very nice, uh, very respectful, even when people were not the same to you. So you have been a great guest, and, and I would welcome you back anytime. All right, so let's look at what. Uh, oh, Mary, is it my turn? Hold on, Mary. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. We have Christian Apologetics 2023 who joined. Oh dang! I'm sorry. Just like 20 minutes ago, um, so we're I wrapping up you. here. But do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself and give any thoughts that you want to give? I, you know, final thought, but also first thought. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first. Can you hear me for a start? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Uh, well, into what he just said, I mean, as as we don't actually live in a, a Christian country, per se, we live in a secular society here. And we obviously, with um, in regards to morality, I mean, you only have to look at some of the hadiths regarding Islam to show uh, that Islam is not exactly moral. I mean, there, there's quite a few in there that are pretty disgusting. Any examples? Um, well, you've got. <laughs> it's not Muhammad, your turn. You're done. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 Muhammad sucking on his is it his nephew's right. tongue, um, kissing the penis yeah. of his grandson. That's false. Um, marrying. Uh, sure. uh, well, these these are the hadiths, and uh, you know you can't really say hadiths are weak or strong or false because uh, hadiths are written by. Uh, those who are um, known, well, what did they say? Students of knowledge through Islam. They they have to go through um, many critics before they can be even classed as hadiths. So to to say that there's a, a weak chain or anything like that, it, it, it doesn't exist. What's written is written. There's arguments about Aisha. Um, her age of when Muhammad married her and consummated the marriage. Now, be, there was never any arguments in the first few centuries of Islam because they just believed in it. But now, obviously, society has changed and our views and laws have changed. You can see that Muslims and their scholars now get ashamed of their prophet and try and come up with as many ideas and fantasies that um aisha was not six when muhammad married her even though there's 11 um narrations and hadiths on aisha from her own words saying she was six years old when they married her now as in regards to the lgbt um communities um alcohol and stuff the bible it, it all talks about that it talk we as christians do not believe in homosexuality as christians we are told and warned about do not drink too much alcohol it, it, there, there are warnings and advice in the bible for all the things that he has mentioned and we too struggle against these people with all these pronouns and different things that have only recently just started coming up um, and becoming a problem. Um, but you cannot use Islam <laughs> as a base of morality against Christianity. You can. And when you talk about, yeah, well, we deal with it as in we, we kill them. Well, as Christians, it's our job to show them, no, we, we won't kill them. We show them the love of Christ and hope that they repent. And then a life is therefore saved if they do repent and turn to Christ. Um, there are many stories that I've seen on YouTube where homosexuals have gone and discussed with um, preachers and other people 
and have become Christian. And <clears throat> they've <clears throat> repented their ways and they've turned into Christians and they're, they're probably better practicing Christians than I am. So there's a life saved. You can't just say, oh, you, you gay are you? Uh, let's behead you. It's you know, Jesus' example of loving and his way to the sinners. That's why he was with the sinners in the New Testament. It was because he wanted them to move away from their sin and show them that God does love them and wants them to be, you know, not be distant from him and wants them close. And that that example is why I am a Christian. It's because I I was once a sinner. I was a criminal. And if it wasn't for the fact that I felt the love of Christ and that I could be forgiven, I would have continued to sin until I would have, well, died. And hey, I was man. close to do that. Preacher, brother, preach. I'm in the same boat. Preach it. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but uh, using Islam as a, a case of morality against Christianity, that is probably one of the funniest things I've ever heard. But, but yeah, uh, <laughs> that's my point. I mean, um, I'm new to the channel. I've only just set up my own. Um, I've been trying to have a debate with Hamza of uh, Hamza's Den for quite a while, and I've been kicked off there a few times. Uh, just oh. by asking a question, I've been kicked off four times. Uh, they don't like they don't like me in Hamza's den, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that that's very interesting because you know Muslims in my comment section are always trying to tell me I need to go on Hamza's den or, in, yeah. or EF Dawa, which are you know basically the same. Yeah, they they, and, and they don't like people. me, <laughs> and I, I keep telling them that. It's not just a question of me going on there. They have to actually allow me on. That yeah, they won't censor people that, that they are selected, which is their right. I, I mean, I, I, to be clear, it's their right to do that. But for the Muslim that comes in my chat and tells me that I have to go on their channel, yeah. and then when I say, well, you know, that's probably not going to happen. I would like to, but it's probably not going to happen. I have my own stuff I need to do. And it's not very likely that they're going to let me talk, even if I try. Um, oh, no, you'll and, be canceled straight that, away. Yeah, right. And I know multiple people who have YouTube channels that are notable, and they tried to join, and they weren't even allowed to join. So it's like... But it, it's very funny hearing that, you know, you got kicked off and and it's not a unique experience, of course, but just for asking a, a question that they didn't like. And that tends to be the case that they, they're happy to, um, you know, they're they're happy as long as they're they're talking to someone who they think is ignorant, um, but they don't. Really That's it. When they pick on half baked Christians awful. and lay people, they that they win. And um, it was a. Uh, I, I went on live and he asked me, I had to change my name a few times on the YouTube just to get on there. And uh, I just simply asked him, I said, do you believe drinking camel urine would uh, cure ailments? And <laughs> also, uh, not only that, if eating dates would prevent me from death, um, from poisoning, why was Muhammad's death that of poisoning? Uh, when he was teaching everyone, if you eat these dates, and there's a verse in the Quran, which is supposed to be God's word, um, then why did he die of poisoning? The prophet, the beloved prophet of all prophets, the seal of prophets, died from poisoning when he told people, if you eat dates, you won't die of poisoning. And, uh, <laughs> and then he just went, oh, sorry, have you gone? Have you gone? And he muted me. And he pretended that I had um, left. And he gave uh -huh. this strange uh -huh. answer. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, my connection was gone. I went on the live chat then and started uh, bombarding more questions um, from Hadiths about some absurdities that I've read. Uh, most of which I've learned from Christian Prince, but some I've um, delved in myself. I've actually gone out and bought the book Sahib Al-Bukhari, Sahib Muslim. Oh, um, wow. That's a lot of money. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I still only have digital. For the truth. I was searching for the truth. And uh, just one of my Christian friends turned around and said to me, <laughs> Listen, if you if you want to know the truth, if you think Islam has got anything to do with the truth, just read the hadiths. He goes, I'll give you two 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 books that you need to go and buy and then make up your mind from then and tell me if that is a godly religion or a satanic religion. And just like that guy just said, you will know them by their fruits. Yeah. 
Jesus was referring to the false prophets in, in that chapter. He was saying, many people will come in my name. Um, people will say, there's the Christ or here's the Christ or come in my name. And they, by their fruits, you will know them. And it also talks about they will be deceived by God's own people. So I think um, that was like a prophecy about some Christians or um, like converting to Islam because, you know, people, they, they make this um, strange claim nowadays that Jesus was a Muslim uh, because obviously I think it means submit, you know, Islam means submission to God. Mm -hmm. Well, if that, if that's the case, then we're all Muslims and we're all saved then, aren't we? So what's the point in arguing? Because if we all submit to God, then we're all Muslim. So, <laughs> you know, it's, um, but yeah, as in, as in that, you will know them by their fruits. That verse, Jesus was talking about false prophets and people who are going to come in his name and try and distort the gospel, what he's teached to his uh, apostles, which is for us, for mankind. And Muhammad is certainly one of those who you could know by his fruits, by reading his hadiths. Um, like <laughs> there's there's that one in particular that I love how he killed 800 Jews in a day and made them dig their own graves. I mean, this is the seal of the prophets. If this guy was a godly man, I mean, Moses killed one person and hated it. What? Yeah. Numbers you know? 31. Eh? Numbers Pardon? 31. Numbers 31. He's just being a distraction. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, okay. So, so, uh, <clears throat> so, so I, I see that Nicodemus and, and possibly I Wyatt also want to say something, but um, he's got to go to bed. Make a, a Done. Fifteen yeah. second or thirty second comment. That's fine, but I really need to get to bed because it's five a.m. Right, so go ahead, Nicodemus. Yeah, just a quick question, uh, Christian. Are you a content creator? And if so, can you share your channel with us? Um, yeah, I've only can. just started. Um, <clears throat> um yeah um how do i do that because um, i'm literally new to this whole it, show if i go on my it, youtube it, channel and share the link and i put that in the chat uh you can put it in the chat here the, but you won't be able to put right. it in the main chat and i can share it into yeah. the main chat oh okay yeah no that's fine i just hope that automatically block <laughs> links in the, in the youtube chat but if you put it in the private chat of uh, the video ninja, then myself or um, Mary, who is a moderator, can post that. By the way, and by the way, video uh, video ninja is so trippy with phones. I don't like it. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I I think that might be what it is that it's the the phones that it's having issues with. Um, it usually isn't like this. It's just really bad today. I've never had it act like this before. I hardly okay. dare go to another uh, screen because it will log me off. Yeah, it's yeah. Don Ninja it, is like yeah. Video. So uh, it wasn't this way garbage. just a short while right. ago. It was no. great actually on phone. Like I could chat while I'm driving, which I can't do in most. So. Mm. So mm. Uh, what you may have answered me earlier when I, I said this, but since you brought it up, um, if you have some time and we can like like record a video and, and describe the problems we're observing, I can pass it on to the developer. He's very responsive and can potentially yeah, get Yeah, sometimes I hear it. other people and I don't hear you. Like, Yeah, so I, I did tell him about that problem and he was like, that's very bizarre. Um, but without any specific details, it's really hard to track down the bug in the software. Um, so you know, maybe we can get together sometime and, and test it out and I can pass it on to him. Um, I'm actually a financial supporter of his because I really love the, the software and he's very responsive in general, even to people who aren't financial supporters. So I can probably get the, the bugs ironed out if, if we can give him information that he can act on. Just saying there's a bug is very difficult for a software engineer to act on. Yeah, there, there, it, yeah, there's, it's very, yeah, it's very buggy. Um, there's, yeah, it, yeah, it's very buggy. Sometimes it kicks me off. Sometimes it's very slow response. It's, it's not a good. Yeah, so, so I definitely can try to get that diagnosed. Um, yeah. So 
if, when you have some time, we can get together that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your info and, and, and yeah, well, um, for, for you, uh, apologetics, Christian apologetics, 2023, my email is in the yeah. description of my videos and on my about page. It's not on this one because I just set it up and there's no video <laughs> description, but anywhere else, if you can if you send me an email, I'd be delighted yeah. to help you get started on YouTube. Um, cause you know, I, I've been doing this for several years and I, I definitely have some information that would be helpful and I would, you know, be yeah. willing to bring you on my program, which will definitely give you a good start to your channel as well. Yeah, that, that would be, that would be really, yeah, appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. I mean, there's a, a lot of uh, building my confidence as well. I mean, I'm already going to be heading down a, a speaker's corner um, in the summer, hoping to meet, um, you know, Bob, Bob the Builder. <laughs> oh yeah, I know Bob. So um, he's gonna. <clears throat> I'm gonna be like shadowing him, um, and I'm hoping in the future, over the next few years, once I've learned a bit more about the the history of of the church, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and a bit more about Islam, because yes, I know I know quite a bit, but I don't know everything. Um, and well, but yeah, I don't no think I ever will know everything. <laughs> But I want to be able to get on a, a level so that, you know, I can, mm -hmm. because there is at the moment a lot of, there's a lot of problems with the church is in regards to there's people not being as Christian as they should be. Um, there's mm -hmm. people not going to church as often. And there are, are a lot of people converting. Um, and the problem is also as well is there are a lot of Muslims and a lot of Muslims that don't know about some of the hadiths that I've, you know, that's just some that I've just said to you, they, 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 they're not aware of them. And it's whether it's because their imams don't teach them or I, I don't know. But um, I've come across so many um, that Do you want to talk about it privately about those hadiths? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right now. Well, he won't say privately. He wants to waste your time. Um, he's going to talk about how wonderful and beautiful they are or that they aren't real. He's just going to throw them under the bus. I've discussed well, your Bible before. says to eat feces, okay? I, I don't bring this up, right? Hey, is not hey, hey. Uh, okay. So I don't want to, as I said, as I said, I don't want to open new topics. I really want to get yeah. started. Yeah. I'm can I, can I talk for like a, quite literally 14 like, hours next here. Stream. No, no, somewhere in private, like, like Discord, Discord. But I've Discord. I've just put my um I've just put my channel um in the Perfect. chat. So if is it Mary? Is that the lady? Yep. That yes. If you if you want to put that into the public chat, yeah, five minutes. I, I can't see it at all. So maybe it's just not. It's oh wait, problem, here it is. It is working. Weird. Yeah. It's yeah. all That's messed up. Yeah. So yeah, I'm happy so to talk about that with anyone. No, actually, if I go off of here, it will crash. So I don't have it. I forgot. Okay. So if uh, you'll just no, do no, it for no, me, no, sorry. No, yep, yep, I got it. No problem. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Hush, child. No, I'm talking to, to the guy with the hadith. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, Lord. Very respectful. Very respectful. Very dull. <laughs> Elias is always like this. Doesn't <laughs> the Bible say that women are not allowed to speak? I can speak okay. to you again. Can you shut yeah, your mouth for that, please? This isn't a church. This isn't a church, Elias. So even if your understanding of the Bible verse was correct, which it's not, it wouldn't apply no. in this situation. Well, I can say the same about all the verses that you interpret in the Quran and Hadith. Oh my goodness, be quiet. Well, we don't no, rely it's, on it's our interpretation. It's obviously about church service. It says it explicitly in the verse. He doesn't care. He doesn't no, care about no, truth. No. All the he cares about is attacking. To quite so. literally says that women should be quiet during the service and learn at home from their husbands. That's not the even if we're granting your interpretation, which again is incorrect because we're not opening another topic, it still has nothing to do with what we're doing right here. So <laughs> thank you. Mary, yeah, so, your final thoughts. Yeah. So my final thoughts are, it's quite interesting that he goes to fruits. He claims that the only thing that's wrong with Islamic countries is that they're poor. Other than that, they're these wonderful, moral, lovely places. But in reality, in all Islam, truly Islamic societies, you end up with blood feuds, 
because that's part of Islam yeah. and paying people off for blood feuds. You end up with private murders that are unpunished. So parents murdering their children, uh, husbands murdering their wives, things like that that are unpunished. False. Elias, shut up. Nah. Would you silence him for me, please? Because I sat through his nonsense. So yeah. he needs to be yeah, silent. So Elias, when you gave your long tirade against Christianity, I objected to a lot of things you said. I'm sure Mary objected to a lot of things you said, and we did not make any attempt to interrupt you. That's so let Mary have her final thoughts. So, yeah, he needs to be muted because he cannot control himself. I've spoken to him before. So you have, if you go to Reliance of the Traveler, there's a whole list of things for which you can kill people uh, for affronts, you know, in, in family relationships and things, and that there's no uh, recompense for it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have, to, and uh, you know, sometimes you don't even have to pay for, fine for it, much less get punished by capital punishment. Um, in addition, the idea of marriage in Islam doesn't even exist. Nikah means coitus. So what they have are contracts for coitus, which is contracts for sex. So you have a sexual contract between a man and a woman from which you get your heirs. That's now, true. you have as many women as you like, up to four wives, and as many slaves as you happen to sex like to slaves. stick your penis into. Be quiet, boy. Now, not only do you have as many as you like, you can have them sequentially as many as you like. So there's misyar marriage in places like uh, Egypt, where girls can be married up to 60 times before they are 18 years old. They are pimped by their own fathers, and this is permitted there. Oh, technically it's illegal. Technically you're not allowed to do it, but in actual fact, under Islamic law, this misyard marriage is completely allowable. And some of the Islamic clerics put up a f uh, big fuss whenever it was going to be, people were going to take moves against it. They're like, no, 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 this is perfectly Islamic. Shia has muta marriage, which can last five minutes for heaven's sake. So all you have is authorized coitus, no marriages at all. There is not a single marriage in Islam. It does not exist. You have authorized coitus and unauthorized coitus, and that's it. Now, under the category of unauthorized coitus is supposed to be sex with the boys, but in reality, and men, but in reality, it is not off limits because whatever Allah happens to conceal for you, you are not to conceal for yourself. And since Allah has placed into your heart the amount of fornication that you will do, the amount of sodomy, the amount of sexual depravity that you will do was created was written for you by Allah before you were even born you are destined to go and play with the bachabazi to go and have sex with the boys in Morocco every single Islamic society has institutionalized boy sex there is not one that does not have an institution of boy sex and that was one of the most striking things that hit travelers from the west the first time they encountered an Islamic country was just how much gay sex they were having especially with little boys and the grooming of children as young as seven seven to thirteen is a prime age for boys to be uh, groomed and to be exploited in this way and to be trafficked into the system that they often don't get out of. Um, some of them, until they're in their 30s and 40s, and so a few of them live the rest of their lives this way, but a huge number are trafficked very young. And people target little boys. They target boys who only have mothers. Why do they only have mothers? Because in Islam, a marriage, again, does not exist. It's only a contract of sex. And at any point, all you have to say is talak, talak, talak. Maybe you have to say it separated by a few weeks. Maybe you have to say it separated by a few months, but you have this easy cutting off of this agreement, this contract that you made to buy a woman's vagina, and so you can set her free again and have all of these uh, these parentless houses. That is what Islam yeah. actually teaches. That is what it introduces. That is where what happens. Any place Islam is dominant, this is the result. It's depravity. It's men running around at night having sex with boys in the villages. So if you have your night vision goggles on, all you see are all these men having sex out in the open because it's constant. So mm -hmm. this absolutely is Islam. So all the things that are happening out in public mm -hmm. that the, the people who hate God in the West, the secularists who hate God, who glorify uh, themselves, who worship themselves, all the things that they are doing in public are things that in Islam is put under wraps and under names and under special conditions, but is still happening at at least that level from abuse 
physical abuse, sexual abuse, sexual immorality. And Mohammed is the perfect example of that because any time that he wanted to do something, some new revelation from Allah would come down and tell him he could do it, which is the <laughs> marker of a false prophet. A false prophet gets prophecies that benefits him. And the most false, most false prophet get prophecies that benefit their penises. And Muhammad was one of those fake penis prophets because so many of his prophecies <laughs> were about wh what he could do with his penis and who he could put it in and how rules that applied to other people. As much rules that there were did not apply to him. And he got to put his penis in more places than other people did in places that were not that were completely forbidden before his time. <laughs> so that is my final comment. And Elias, you had your chance. I kept my mouth shut. You don't get to reply. Mary, I think we're going to have to nickname you Christian Princess. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> wow. Uh, but it's true. So... You know what she said? Because I obviously you can tell by my accent. I live in England. These Muslim grooming gangs are absolutely, t like, they are rife in this country. And it's become that much of a problem that people have took riots, um, Tommy Robinson, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, he's yep. had to take to the streets uh, because Luton was just absolutely riddled with it. And he's, he actually took it upon himself. There was this grooming gang, I think, of 30 Islamic men um, that up in Birmingham, they were sex trafficking girls. And I think over between the course of like four years, there had been over a thousand victims between these men. And he managed to get he, he got he didn't get glorified by the news by by uh, by the way for helping and exposing them. He went undercover and he actually filmed them. He went and seen the victims, got their stories and let their stories be heard. And once that was done, the news and the police, and, and the police had no choice but to step in because the public said, hang on a minute, this isn't right. These girls are speaking out. Someone's given them a voice, a platform to speak on. Why hasn't the police acted? And the reason the police don't act here is because if they do, they get called Islamophobes, and then they get sacked. So this is the problem. And these uh, grooming gangs, especially like o over the UK, I I'm telling you now, are one of the biggest problems. And whenever you go into, um, whenever you see a UK prison system, you will see that the majority of the wings are run by Muslims. And they are, they are literally, they're out, uh, what do you call it, when you force your religion upon someone and you don't give them a choice. Um, Genocide. I, I, I can't Ethnic remember. Housing. But they're, they're, ba they're basically just turning around and saying to people that I had it done to me um, when I, back when I was drinking and I was in for violence before I became a Christian. Uh, I was in a prison. I was told that if, if I didn't become a Muslim, I was going to get stabbed in the showers. And this is what made my faith more in Christianity um, come to light. And Do I you want to discuss more. this? Pardon? Do you want to discuss this somewhere, like in Discord or somewhere? Uh, yeah, you can tell him why every time Muslim men come into a country, they rape tons of people. You yeah, can tell we'll him why Iraq why war, you do that. Afghanistan war, we'll talk so, about all those stuff. How, how, I mean, how, how, anytime Muslims show up in an area, rapes go sky high. Hey guys, Islam I'm, I'm, I'm brings rape. This, yeah, can we Christianity brings Iraq, Iraq war with two million deaths. Uh, okay, guys, please. I, I said I didn't want to open any more discussions. Yeah, that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to like privately contact this Hadith guy. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah cool. I, I don't blame yeah, you, you Elias, by, by any means. Um, uh, Christian Apologetics 2023. I don't really blame you either because you joined very late mm -hmm. and, and you definitely wanted to get something in. He blames uh, me. <laughs> it's okay. Man, because you, those were your final thoughts. I don't blame anyone. Um, but I, I do need to sign off. So, uh, what uh, minute are we on, I, by the way, in your um, in in your life? Two or five. Two, uh, two hour five so minutes. So we're at fourteen yeah. hours and fifteen minutes. Fourteen hours and fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Hadis guy, can, can you please put your contact contacts in in the private chat here? Yeah, I've what yeah. my email. I, I, email? Do you have like uh, something better? 
Discord. Uh, yeah, so Elias put his uh, Discord in the the stream earlier. I've added him on Discord. I assume that. Oh, that, that, that was uh, you. Okay, I, I need a Hadith guy too. Can I contact Hadith guy? I really like. Yeah, this. I'm, I'm, I've just put my email in the um in in the private. Ah, this B two yeah. Darona Gmail. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So um, Bob joined here at the last minute. Bob, I'll catch you on the next one. Uh, I've had a, at least one or two discussions with you before, but since you did join, I'll go ahead and give you a, a chance to make a very brief statement, like maybe two minutes maximum, and, and then I'm going to close out. Can you hear me, Bob? This is really not working well today. Uh, all right, it, it doesn't matter. Um, Bob will catch you next time uh, on the next stream. To any, I've seen quite a few Muslims in the chat uh, recently, which is great. I'm glad that you're here. Any Muslim who wants to have a friendly discussion with me on any topic of your choosing, you can email me at Thaddeus at reasonedanswers.com and I will get something set up at a time that's convenient for you so I'll yeah what is your email again could you um put that in your uh private in the private chat so, uh, so uh, I can get yeah i can i can put it in the private chat as well it's also mm -hmm. on on the channel description it's on the screen right now i'm not making it hard to for anyone who wants to to get in touch with me um <laughs> Bob in, in the private chat. Let's have a debate with Mary. No, that's not what's going to happen right now, Bob. And we're definitely not going to have a debate. But if you want to have a debate with Mary at a later date, by all means, uh, email me and I will get that scheduled. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll have some fun with you, Bob. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to debate too. Um, if, if, if I was just thinking, yeah, I thought that was Bob the Builder for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the uh, Muslim Bob who has come into a few of these streams. Oh, it's Obviously, Bob it's Bob probably Bob. not his real name, but then again, it's not Bob the Builder's real name either. So there you go. Uh, so my closing thoughts here is that we need a way to objectively decide what the truth is. Uh, we we had a lot of discussions about problems in the Quran and some discussions about problems in Christianity today. Uh, uh, Elias was a, a, a very good guest. He was very respectful. He did his best to give good answers. But ultimately, a lot of the answers boiled down to, I believe in the Quran. Uh, I believe in Muhammad. I believe in Islam. Uh, which is fine if you have an objective reason to believe in it in the first place. Then you can, and what ideally what you want to do is you want to weigh all the evidence for and all the evidence against a position and come to the conclusion about whether it is the truth or not. This applies to Christians, this applies to Muslims, this applies to atheists and anyone else who may catch this stream. That ideally, what you want is you want to objectively look at the evidence, objectively weigh the evidence, and decide what the evidence best fits. In any position, there's going to be difficulties and there's going to be strengths. And you need to properly weigh your position. Uh, in my many Hello, years Bob. of study of Christianity, Hello, 25... Yeah, I hear you, Bob. Um, we got some volume from you, but we're in the process of wrapping up here. Sorry, um, so in my 25 years of study uh, of Christianity, and I mean actual study, in-depth study, uh, I have found that Christianity stands up to every test given to it. That's not to say that it's impossible that new evidence might emerge that, that could convince me otherwise. But based on all the evidence that I have seen, Christianity stands up to scrutiny extremely well. Based on my le less extensive study of Islam, now I've been studying Islam for four to five years, I have found nothing but problems, uh, to be frank. I have found 
I have found explanations for the problems for Muslims, but I have never found any positive argument for Islam mm -hmm. that I could even remotely begin to accept as a reason to believe it. So if mm -hmm. I was already a Muslim, I could accept explanations for, say, Muhammad's behavior, why, even though it may seem immoral to me, why it would ultimately be acceptable because it was commanded by God or it wasn't what it appeared or, or so on and so forth. But I first would need a reason to believe in Islam to for those explanations to even enter into the equation because I don't need a reason not to believe in Islam. I need a reason to believe in it. Likewise, I don't need a reason not to believe in Christianity. I need reasons to believe it and I have many of them and, I, and they are very robust and thorough in my understanding, in my investigation. Now, uh, when I look at something like atheism, it, it doesn't even really enter into the realm of possibilities because it just fundamentally contradicts the what I understand about the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. And it's not an argument from silence or an argument from what we don't know. It's an argument from what we do know. And the evidence that we have overwhelmingly uh, supports the idea that there is a designer behind the universe, that there is a intelligent creator. And atheism seems to be internally incoherent that, uh, you know, things like, uh, Atheists almost 100% argue for certain morals while also not having intellectual any intellectual basis for their morality. So I would say of all the positions, atheism is pretty much the easiest to dismiss. And then for any other position, you know, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Sikhism, uh, traditional animism, uh, tribal religions, whatever the case may be, any other position, I need more evidence for that position than I have for Christianity. Uh, just providing me explanations for why X problem that I raise isn't that much of a problem after all is way insufficient. So my challenge to any Muslim in the chat, you know, I, I will have a discussion on any topic you want even the Muslim favorite topic to discuss, the Trinity. Uh, any topic you want, that's fine. But if you really want me to believe in Islam, I want you to have this discussion with me, which is what is your best evidence for the truth of Islam? Or differently put, why should someone convert to Islam? I would love to have that discussion with anyone who would love to have it, whether that's uh, Elias, someone else, in the chat right now or someone who sees us later on a replay you have my contact information you know mm -hmm. how to get a hold of me i was mm -hmm. planning on having another stream tomorrow with lloyd uh, responding to some muslim attempts to state that child marriage is not allowed in islam uh, however since i it's almost coming up on 5 30 now I, I have postponed that stream you'll still see it on my schedule uh, Lloyd and I will reschedule that, work out a date for that tomorrow with him. He already agreed to reschedule it. So that part uh, is, is definite. But as for when that's rescheduled, don't know precisely. If you want to see all of my upcoming streams, including ones that aren't posted on YouTube, as well as anything that's posted from around 50 different Christian apologetics channels, you can go to reasonanswers.com forward slash calendar and you will see the unified apologetics calendar that I have put together. So that's all for today. Thank you for 14 and a half hours uh, of very interesting discussion, very good fellowship with Christians and some uh, very good discussions with Muslims who, who made some uh, cohesive arguments today. They, they, the, the arguments that we saw today were of higher quality than we typically see. I'll, I'll put it that way. So thank you to everyone who tuned in for a portion of this. I imagine other than Nicodemus, who is insane, there's no one else who has watched <laughs> all 14 and a half hours uh, other than me, of course. Um, so whatever portion you joined for, whether that's the last five minutes or whether it was a couple hours, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And Justice 
gave a super chat as I was talking here. Uh, Mary Harb, wonderful job today. Thank you for your service to Christ our Lord. A blessed Palm Sunday to you. And the peace of our Lord be with you. Oh, thank you. I so missed that. that. I'm note, sorry. All right. With that note, I will be signing off so that I can go to Palm Sunday service in four hours. Thanks for having me on for this as well. Yes. So thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a blessed week. Take this information, use it in your discussion with Muslims. Go and serve the Lord. God bless. Bye-bye.